In my last video, I asked what the carnivore diet does to the gut microbiome. In this video, I'll try to answer this question. What's up everybody? How's everybody doing? Your gut bacteria predominantly operate and run on fiber from the food that you eat. One thing you often hear, especially from vegan ideologues, is that a diet devoid of fiber will leave your gut lacking short-chain fatty acids. Acetate, butyrate, and propionate are the more popular ones, but there's also formate, isobutyrate, valerate, isovalerate. These acids are one result of fiber fermentation in your gut, they say. Farts and bloating being others, I'll add. Anyway, butyrate gets the most attention as it provides most of the energy required by colonocytes or colon cells. It is necessary for colon health and thought to protect against cancer. Propionate is used for satiety signaling and acetate for lipogenesis. These are some of their functions. Not much is said about all of their functions or the other four short chain fatty acids or how those impact our health. Lastly, we supposedly need fiber to maintain healthy gut microbiome diversity. What I'm wondering is how this abrasive, indigestible plant fiber containing gut-wrenching toxins such as oxalates or lectins is optimal for colon health. Consumption of this problematic fiber cannot be the only way to deliver short-chain fatty acids to the colon, can it? So what does the carnivore diet with its lack of fiber actually do to the gut microbiome diversity? Well, anecdotally, carnivores report their gut microbiome tests show more diversity than 80% of people tested. And I have seen this number as high as 94%. Question, how come none of these vegan gut microbiome experts ever post their gut microbiome test results? Answer, candida, SIBO, underlying vegan gut issues. Anecdotes aside, I recently got a hold of Lisa Bailey's gut microbiome test. At the time of this test, she had been on the carnivore diet for six months. Prior to going on the carnivore diet, she ate an omnivorous diet considered very helpful by most. As a carnivore, she ate meat, fish, ofo, eggs, and little raw dairy. Within three weeks of the carnivore diet, her 20-year-old issue of loss of smell and taste disappeared. She says she has never been healthier and has great energy. So we know that the gut bacteria feed on fiber, which is really important for creating those short-chain fatty acids, for regulating hunger, for boosting your immunity. Does this guy look like he's healthy and has great energy? Onto the test. The diversity of Lisa's gut microbiome put her in the 87th percentile. So while it is believed that fiber is necessary to maintain gut microbiome diversity, Lisa's was very diverse, having eaten no fiber in at least six months. How are you gonna explain that one, vegans? Another one of Lisa's results was this wellness match of 95.2%, or her gut microbiome diversity almost perfectly matched the average gut microbiome sample of reportedly healthy people. She also scored a 10 out of 10 when it comes to bacteria associated with healthy weight. Albeit the levels of these bacteria were lower than what's allegedly optimal, Lisa says she's very lean and athletic. Do you think Goji Man is maintaining a healthy body weight on his gut healing diet? Are any vegans? And are they doing it without any gut problems? You know, many times I ask vegans critical of the lack of fiber in my diet to name a single strain of bacteria that's supposed to be in my gut, what it eats, and what function it serves. Not one of these gut microbiome experts ever provided a single answer. That's right. The good guys are all whole foods vegans. Well, let me give you some ideas. One bacterium found in Lisa's gut was the beneficial propionate producing Ackermansia mucinophilia. To increase its numbers, it is recommended you eat fruits and vegetables. And fish oil. <laughs> Seems like an omnivorous bacterium to me, hench. That's right. The good guys are all whole foods vegans. Debunk this, my carnivore friends. Lisa's gut also contained Enerostipes, Coprococcus, Eubacterium, Roseburia, Ruminococcus, or the strains responsible for short-chain fatty acid production, 
from fiber, something Lisa hadn't eaten in six months. So why are they in her gut and what are they eating? Other than having a great variety of the more common, supposedly quote-unquote good bacteria, Lisa also had 10 species of bacteria that less than 5% of the population share. There is much we don't know about these, but here are some of the 10 strains with some interesting details. Carnobacterium. Carno. <laughs> Bacterium produces lactic acid from glucose, but maybe not exclusively. So there seem to be carbs in her gut and or this bacteria are eating something else. Allobaculum. This strain is dominant in creating impenetrable gut mucus lining, which strengthens the immune system. Lisa speculates it was these bacteria that sealed her leaky gut, restoring her sense of taste and smell. It would be interesting to see how many vegans on Goji Men's gut healing diet have these or some other bacteria like it present in their guts. Let's see their gut microbiome test, Goji Men. Well, the vegan diet is the only diet capable of fixing the underlying gut issues. Then there was the Ronella genus. Besides being involved in folate, B vitamins, fat and nitrogen metabolisms, all very important on the carnivore diet, this bacterium also makes glucose from protein, a process known as gluconeogenesis. Calcidoprobacter was another very rare strain that seems responsible for producing short-chain fatty acid butyrate from fat. No, not carbs, but fat. Not fiber, FAT! You mean to tell me there are bacteria making fat from fat just as our bodies do? Impossible. A Anerovorax genus is next. These bacteria break down putrescine into acetate and propionate. Putrescine is a byproduct of protein breakdown. So essentially we have protein being turned into short chain fatty acids. And this toxic putrescine, something vegans warn meat eaters about, being broken down into something vegans say you can only get from fiber. Crazy. Acinetobacter is known to break down aromatic compounds in soil, so I wonder if it has something to do with the breakdown of the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons in our food. These bacteria are also thought to be allergy protective. Well, the vegan diet is the only diet capable of fixing the underlying gut issues. There were four other unique species of bacteria found in her gut, but not much is known about those. So clearly, the bacteria in Lisa's gut are producing short-chain fatty acids. But according to the test, she only had 23% of butyrate-producing bacteria and 54 that produce propionate, as compared to the average sample tested. What's interesting is that the test lists only the bacteria that allegedly consume only fiber as the sole short-chain fatty acid producers. So it would seem that the testers are completely ignoring the Coprococcus, Calcidoprobacter, and Enerovorax strains, all of which produce short-chain fatty acid from sources other than fiber. But this test doesn't measure actual short-chain fatty acid levels in the gut. Paul Mason presented a study that did add low-carb down under 2018. Although that study did not measure all short-chain fatty acids, it showed that people on strict carnivore diet produced more short-chain fatty acids in their guts than people on the vegan diet. No. Impossible. So, what might be going on in Lisa's gut? How come she still has some of this fiber-digesting bacteria if she doesn't eat any fiber? Is her gut really producing less short-chain fatty acid on the carnivore diet? Or is she like the people in the study? Does it matter? I think it's fair to say that, like people in the study, Lisa's gut bacteria is producing a fair amount of short-chain fatty acids. No fiber required. There's evidence that at least certain bacteria strains, such as Ackermansia mucinophilia, are neither vegans nor carnivores. Sorry, hench. And will survive eating a variety of foods. Maybe these bacteria aren't some picky vegans that only eat fiber, but are interested in consuming carbs in general rather than worrying where they come from? So, if you consume dairy, eggs, and organs, like Lisa, you are consuming some carbs. That's probably enough to feed some of this short-chain fatty acid producing bacteria. Then there's the Ronella, which makes glucose from protein, probably feeding these sugar-loving strains. 
I read one study that stated that certain gut bacteria feed on gut secretions. Does our gut secrete glucose or did the researchers mean gut bacteria secretions? How else do we explain a strong presence of carb feeding gut bacteria in a person who consumes hardly any carbs? And let's not forget the enerovorax bacteria making short chain fatty acid from protein byproduct putrescine. And what about the calcidoprobacter responsible for producing short chain fatty acid butyrate from fat? Lastly, what other undiscovered bacteria are there producing short chain fatty acids in the gut of any given carnivore? Are some of the already known bacteria producing short chain fatty acids from protein, fat, gut secretions or bacteria metabolites and not being given credit? Clearly, the hypothesis that strict meat eaters don't produce short chain fatty acids in their gut is pseudoscientific and needs to be trashed. But even if it were correct, so what? Carnivores do not consume the abrasive fiber or the huge amount of gut injuring toxins that vegans do. So why would carnivores need as much gut healing butyrate if they are not injuring their guts as much? Inflammation in the gut will be compounded by compounds such as oxalates. Still, they do seem to have more short chain fatty acids produced in their guts than plant eaters do, if not butyrate specifically. Moreover, carnivores consume more short chain fatty acids in their diet, while vegans don't eat any butyrate. And the way vegans get butyrate to colonocytes is by breaking down short chain fatty acids into, wait for it, ketones. Yes, the deadly, starvation-driven ketones that are killing all the keto dieters and not before making them all bald. Great going, vegans. Your pseudoscience laughs in your face. Again. So, not only does the meat-based diet seem to provide our body with more short-chain fatty acids than the nutrient-deficient vegan diet, it does so by multiple avenues. Gut microbes, dietary sources, blood ketones. And... Your blood is probably the best way to deliver nutrients to any and all cells, colonocytes included. And just because gut bacteria make butyrate, that doesn't mean that butyrate isn't consumed, at least in part, by other perhaps quote-unquote bad bacteria. If short-chain fatty acids are essential for human health and a meat-based diet produces and delivers more of them in a greater variety of ways, how is the plant-based diet a clear winner here? The same diet that also inundates our guts with potentially harmful fiber and gut-wrenching toxins? Wouldn't it make sense that a meat-based diet or the diet of many of our ancestors, instead of this modern diet full of hybridized imported processed foods, be optimal for at least some of us? Again, if the amount of short-chain fatty acid production is one way to rate the healthfulness of a diet, Dear vegans, how is the vegan diet, which produces less of these compounds, how is that the more healthful diet? What else can I say? What I already stated in my previous video on this topic. The research into the gut microbiome is still very new. Thus, not much is known about the gut microbiome. So anyone who makes definitive and authoritative statements about it is not a truth teller, but most likely an ideologue pushing some other agenda. Also, because we have studied mostly microbiomes of people who eat mostly plants, while at the same time assuming that people who eat predominantly plants are as healthy as people can be, that is the paradigm that dictates how we understand what's supposedly healthy or healthful when it comes to our gut bacteria. But what if a meat-based diet can produce better health outcomes? At least for some people. Will the scientific world catch up and deem those people's microbiomes as model for health? Not as long as the processed food and pharmaceutical industries fund academia and research. But this is precisely how we end up with these reductionist narratives such as, quote, you can only get short chain fatty acids from ingesting indigestible fiber, unquote. Why not eat cardboard then? Wood chips anyone? Cellulose though. Eat your vegetables, Johnny, they say. Eat your fiber-rich, heart-healthy grains, Becky. Those bring in the highest profit margin. So instead of feeding this toxic, indigestible food to cattle, let's feed your gut bacteria, not you. Even though animal-based foods do contain short-chain fatty acids, 
Even though our bodies produce short chain fatty acids from dietary fat, even though on a carnivorous diet gut bacteria still turn carbs, protein and fat into short chain fatty acids, even though a low carb diet will produce ketones to feed our colonocytes directly, all of these scientific facts are ignored in order to push fiber consumption, in order to push veganism, which is nothing more than the prohibition of meat consumption in favor of plants, cleverly disguised as a subjectively ethical movement. Veganism is nothing but the useful idiot of the pharmaceutical and processed food industries. Most vegans are simply misguided. Veganism has nothing to do with animal welfare or human health, but everything to do with control and profits. So how about instead of worrying about feeding your gut bacteria, dear subjectively ethical vegans, why don't you worry about feeding yourself? Stop trying to feed people livestock feed and have a steak. And let's see those gut microbiome tests, goji man. Come on vegans, don't be scared. Thanks for watching guys. Have a good day. Let me explain why the vegan diet is the only diet capable of fixing the underlying gut issues and what happens in the gut when you try and fix these issues by going high meat or meat only in your diet. Debunk this, my carnivore friends.